Welcome back to Continental Club, where we discuss the hottest topics in European football. As you can see, it's a slightly experimental yeah. lineup today. It's myself, Michael McCubbin, and James Wayne. And you can tell it's going to be a hilarious episode because we Banter. swapped Kevin Phillips and Sean Wright Phillips. Yeah, all in. the Phillips. Yeah. All the Phillips in. They're looking brilliant back there. See you later, Pele. Um, and our first question came from Pranav Lange, who is a regular contributor. Thank you, Pranav. He says, How high? Do you rate Marco Verratti amongst the best midfielders in the world? And then he puts in brackets, considering he absolutely bossed the game against Liverpool. McCubbin, Verratti, yay or nay? You a fan? Uh, I am a fan of Verratti. I am a fan of Verratti. Um, and obviously, he's not being talked about quite in the same way that he was two years ago, no, when he was not. pretty much the most in-demand central midfielder in the world. Um, however, he did have a good game against Liverpool that horror challenge mm. on Gomez aside mm. um, and I think yeah he's just been a little bit unfortunate in terms of injuries and whatnot so like against Liverpool for example 90% out pass accuracy that's what you're used to with him um, two pass, dribbles completed three tackles made um, so yeah he was a very very dominant force in the midfield um, however yeah he, he hasn't had a huge amount of game time this season 625 minutes in the league that's the 13th most in the PSG squad 349 less than Rabio, mm. who wants out. Um, so, yeah, and, and Marquinhos as well has 455 more, obviously. He's been playing in that kind of deep lying role as well. So, it's a lot when Tuchel prefers a centre back in, in your role than, mm. than yourself. It's not, yeah, not for good. sure. And then so, so, yeah, mate, I, I feel like, I don't know if his, his numbers have been dropping off, but I don't know whether that's mainly to do with the fact of inconsistent game time and also the fact that PSG are just better than they used to be. So like in 2016-17, he had 3.9 tackles and interceptions a game. That was down to 3.5 last season and three this season. Um, but however, that's also coincided with Rabiot's performances, I think, improving. He's, 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 he's become a he's more really adept up, um, defensively. Um, and I think the PSG defence in general have been able to clear up more. In terms of his, ta his attacking output as well, he averaged 1.4 key passes two seasons ago. That's gone down to 0.8 this year. But having said that, he's probably having to do less less of that, isn't he? Because since Neymar and Mbappe came in, they the can pretty much the creation, run the attack yeah. by themselves. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, there, there's clearly ways in which he can improve. But I don't think, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's the, a shadow of the player that he was before. Mm. I just don't think people are speaking about him as much. Um, and yeah, may, maybe it is just a case of it's just not working out with Tuchel. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's gone under the radar quite a bit because hes I don't think he's changed that much as a player. I think the team's changed around him. Mm. Um, the numbers, as you said, of the tackles and interceptions have gone down, but this is the team that dominate the ball, hold the ball a lot yeah. of the time. Um, and getting more dominant as well. Exactly. And you forget, he's only 26. Like He's still quite, you know, he's coming into his peak. This should be his peak yeah. right now. But for a player that he is, he I, I personally, I think he should move. to once he, once he gets out of PSG, I think the Italian league could be good for him. I think Barcelona wanted him. Barcelona would be good for him. Same with Real Madrid. Well, they they could Real Madrid could do with him. Yeah, with I mean Barcelona are now looking really heavily at Frankie de Jong, and it feels like he's slightly just slipped down that pecking order a bit. Mm. And Rabiot um, as well. They've cut. They've cut. Yeah, exactly. Rabiot uh, exactly. more. Exactly. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether he gets a move this summer. Mm. Also, I think he should do. Mm. For him to be considered as one of the best in the world, which he could easily do. There's there's no denying the talent that's actually there, but. but I mean, he's overshadowed within the PSG squad. He's obviously other players are preferred, as we've discussed. Um, so yeah, for him to be considered um, as one of the best midfielders in the world, yeah, I think he definitely has to move um, and thrive and, and kind of show that he can run a midfield yeah. uh, as well as I think we all probably agree that he can. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, as Michael alluded to earlier, he's always been an exceptional passer. Mm, yeah. I think in only one of his six years at PSG has his pass accuracy dropped below ninety percent. Which is wow. truly, yeah. truly, you know, that's top, that's top. Um, but yeah, a lot of injuries hampering a bit of his progress as well. And then Tucker, when he took over in May, said he was overweight, which is really? pretty damning from your coach. Mm. Um, and he, you know, he didn't go to the World Cup as well. So this should have really been his year to really stamp his authority. Mm. And his numbers aren't that impressive. I still think he's a great player, but I, yeah, I could probably see him moving on. But as I said before, Barcelona looking around at other options now. Um, I mean, just PSG in general, it, it seems like a strange place to spend the best years of your life. Yeah, yeah. He's been, um, there, as said, been there for six years. He was in the team of the season. I think you said this before yeah, off every camera. Season. Every single season he's been at PSG. How other, you know, the other giants of Europe haven't gone, 
we need this bloke. Mm. Like, it, but I think it's, it's like price tag as well. Though I think when when Barcelona, uh, when when Neymar went to, to PSG, I think Barcelona wanted Verratti, but PSG were quoting him at plus a hundred mil. Yeah. And then plus, I think it's just the price tag. No one's really spent that much on a central midfielder. You know, United spent ninety mil on Pogba, but no one's really spent plus hundred. No one has spent yeah. plus hundred yeah. mil on a central midfielder yet. And PSG um, and would be the team to do that. And obviously, they hold him already. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And and um, and there are other central midfielders about. I think maybe it's just the kind of rise to prominence of other other midfielders in Europe. Um, oh, that, that's kind of that's kind of uh, I don't know had this had this kind of effect. Obviously, like. Players like I mean, like for example, I mean he has his own injury problems. But if you were to say, you know, spend spend a, a, a huge amount of money on Verratti or say Thiago Alcantara, I'd probably mm. go for Thiago, like just okay. because. Even with his injuries, even more injury. Perhaps, mm. perhaps. like I, I don't know. I just think he he's just a little bit more proven. I don't yeah. Know. Like I, I'm just a bit more impressed by him as a player. Yeah, but, yeah. And probably uh, a better creator as well. Putting yeah. you guys on the spot a bit here, what team do you think he should move to? I was just I mean, uh, thinking about yeah, that. I like that. Um, but um, yeah, what team do you think he should move to? to yeah, what, what would he fit best in? Per, I think he'd be probably. completely out of their price limit, but I, I think he'd be a perfect fit for Arsenal. Oh, um, yeah. Playing he'd be along fantastic Lucas Terreri, he'd be brilliant at he'd Arsenal. Be oh, uh, I, he'd, he'd look good in the kit as well. He'd look great in the yeah. kit, yeah. We, we yeah I, can cover, picture, I can picture it. I can genuinely picture yeah. it at Arsenal. Yeah. But obviously the he'd price be, He'd be great, but yeah. Um, other than that, in the Premier League, I don't think most Premier League midfielders Midfields are pretty well stocked, at least for the top clubs. Mm. Maybe a Spurs. Spurs, Spurs, I was thinking of um, because they haven't got. I mean, they have got Christian Eriksen, um, but they haven't got the kind of deep lying killer pass. Yeah, they yeah. don't. He'd I be a step he up the but, wings, but I, I think yeah. I think he should he should go to Italy personally. Back to I think yeah, he he is a, well, obviously Italian himself. He plays the Italian way. His stats kind of read of an Italian player, kind of sitting deep, getting the ball and just passing it yeah. as well he's, as he he's, can. He's not the paciest guy, is he? But like, um, Cubs, where would you like to see him? I don't know. I think you, you mentioned Real Madrid before. That that would like mm. that would be pretty. He, he would be he pretty would, great. Yeah. Like, long term heir to Modric. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Long term heir because he's he's got he's got a similar kind of skill set. I think he's also contributed to a similar amount of goals in yeah. the last few years to Modric, which isn't a huge amount, but um, considering his defensive output as well. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah I'd, six, I'd say Real Madrid. goal contributions in three years. I was doing that. I was doing yeah. the research for this, and Modric had eighteen. Yeah. Um, Rakitic is someone that you can sort of compare it to, 31. So he, his output is not nearly as as prominent as some other central midfielders in the world, but an exceptional, exceptional passer. Yeah, yeah and he doesn't. He, ne he never plays in an in advanced exactly. role either, exactly. which you see with, with players like Rakitic. He's more of a controller. Yeah. But yeah, that's our opinion on Marco Verratti. We're both, we're all sort of saying he should have a move. Uh, mm. But yeah, can be considered amongst the top in the world, but just needs to stay fit. So yeah, what do you guys think of Marco Verratti? Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Right, as you might have noticed, that was a pretty speedy first section, but that's mm. because we wanted to get stuck in to some big match previews because yes. there's two cracking games this weekend. We'll come on to the second one in due course, but the first one we want to talk about is Real Madrid-Valencia, which is tomorrow night. McCubbin, Real Madrid, not in good shape, really, in the league. I mean, they've not at all. <laughs> picked up under Solari, but in, in, they're in tatters this season. They are, yeah. I mean, they've kind of picked up under Solari, but they were awful, like actually oh. awful against Ivar. Um, I mean, we, we spoke about it at the so start of the week, I'm pretty sure, but like, it was ju it was woeful. It was so, so bad. Like, not worse than Mourinho's United this season. That's saying <laughs> That's something, saying you something know. Like, um, the, it was their fifth league loss. They only lost six in the entirety of like, the last campaign. Um, they had three shots on target. Um, they got caught offside 11 times. I believe Benzema alone got caught offside eight times. Don't know how that is possible. I think that just shows a lack of application. Just get back on the side. Yeah, I just, it just, it's it, yeah, just, they just seem to completely collapse. Um, so, yeah, I just it, I don't know what, what you can say about Real Madrid that's not already been said this season. Mm. Um, they're just really poor in, in, in every area. Clearly miss Ronaldo. Mm. Um, up top, which is more so than I thought they would, to be honest. Um, but I think they're paying for not, not getting in a top class replacement for him, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, or at least not look... using Bale in the way that they should be. Yeah. And their defences look shaky as well. Yeah. Varane has looked a shadow of his former self. I don't know whether he's just a bit tired from the World Cup or whatever, but so many basic errors. I mean, it could be fatigue, but then you look at other players who, who went to the World Cup uh, into the latter stages, people like Hazard and Bappe, obviously not central defenders, so it's hard to compare. But like, I think it's, I don't know, I, 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 sometimes I think it could come 
bit of an excuse, perhaps. Mm. Um, and yeah, and let's right. they, they've also conceded, they're kind of conceding more than their expected goals suggest they should be, only about 2.3 more. Um, however, that would have resulted in a point shift that would take them up to third in theory. Um, but it's just been a funny old La Liga season, yeah, hasn't it? Really, like really no one's champ. actually Real been any quality, good. Like yeah. Barcelona um, actually not on top of the league, but they were top of the league, and Se Sevilla are now top of the league with what I think is the same points tally that Arsenal have in the Premier League or whatever. So like, um, yeah, it just shows that it's, it's all become squeezed, and it's been pretty entertaining for all that for that reason. Um, but yeah, I mean, personally, I just can't see Solari sticking in this job for me. No. Like, yeah. unless, unless unless results really start to pick up, he just doesn't have. There's just not the the signs there that Real Madrid. I, I don't see where where they're going to improve. Like last season, they were, they had a pretty poor start to the season, but at least you looked at Ronaldo, who was going through a dry patch, and his shot numbers and whatnot suggested that he was going to start banging, yep. and he did eventually start did, banging. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's the case um, with with uh, any any of the Madrid yeah. forward line at he, the moment. Even in midweek, they were pretty lucky against Roma. They yeah. were, Indebted to an amazing Carvajal block. Roma was so bad in front of goal. Cengiz under missed one of well, the they, worst they, they chances. Missed, they, missed, they missed Dzeko, didn't they? They missed Dzeko as so. well. Um, yeah, with Dzeko, it would have, I, I think they probably would have drawn yeah. at least got a win, maybe Roma. Um, but, James, what are you making of Valencia this year? Because they haven't been great. Yeah, either. I mean, considering last season, they were doing well. I mean, Finished the players fourth, they brought yeah. in looked an exciting squad, considering they've lost quite a lot of players over the, you know, the years. Like... They've always had decent players, but you know, Paco Alcantara, he's he moved to mm. Barcelona and now is at Dortmund and absolutely killing it. Mm. But yeah, there, it's quite a, I wouldn't say a similar season in terms of, um, you know, Real Madrid obviously will perform mm. a lot better than Valencia, but it's similar in terms of there was something to be expected from the team that are completely underperforming at the moment. I think that they're, they're currently 15th. Expected points has got them at fourth, which is yeah. ridiculous. That's crazy. I mean, it. And, and the problems lie with, I mean, they had Simone Zaza last season who was absolutely banging it from, you know, kind of changed his career around. And they brought in Michi Batshuayi, who, once again, was absolutely on fire, looks exciting. Um, nailed down can Dogbia, once again, exciting. Um, but he, Batshuayi, this and is, Gonzalo Guedes. and Guedes. I mean, they have uh, Santi Mina as well, who's also an exciting player and has been their main man, really, this season. But, um, yeah, Batshuayi, one goal so far this season. And, and four great. starts. Yeah, league. and and, and mm. if you look, the, the defense is doing well. I mean, um, oh, I've forgotten his name now. The Argentinian Garay mm. and um, oh god, I forgot what the other guy's name is now. Ex Arsenal Gabriel. Gabriel. Um, both of them two kind of veteran defenders are actually playing very well. Um, oh god, I keep forgetting all the players' <laughs> names. The Arsenal, the the has a turn him around like a Beyblade. Oh, Coquelin. That's Coquelin. the one. He's actually picked turn up. Turn him around like a Beyblade. His um, his performances have picked up. Yeah, it's, it's quite annoying because they're playing defensively very well, but the attack is just not there. And the talent they have, they shouldn't be playing this poor. Because that but shows I'm, why they've got so many draws though, right? Yeah, yeah, but, but they, they, they are starting to pick up. The game against uh, Juventus just gone. I mean, they put the ball in the back of the net once. I know it was uh, called off, uh, not offside, but it was a handball. Um, but they look good. They mm. actually look good against a big team. And things have started to change for them. They've la won their last two games, they I believe. Have. After, so, drawing, after only winning one yeah, of their opening 11. I mean, if, if, the attack, and 13. if the attack can perform like they should do, they've got bags of talent there, then you will see them rise up the table. And I think in this game, I'm really hoping for it, because I really like Valencia as a club, that Valencia do go on and win this game. And I don't see why they couldn't. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there's only three players that have scored more than once this season, which is not very good. Well, in the Valencia in squad? The Valencia Jesus, squad. I didn't know it was that bad. That's absolutely mental. Wow. And Rodrigo's the only one averaging more than 1.7 shots a night, uh, per 90. So is Simone Sarza still at Valencia? I'm not too sure. I think he might have moved gone, on. Yeah. I think he might have moved on. Get us in the comments below where Simone Sarza yeah. is in his ridiculous penalty run-up. Um, but yeah, after, after, after this season. game uh, for Real Madrid, uh, they play Huesca and Rava, Rayo Vallecano, sorry, who are 20th and 19th, so before the winter break, that mm. is. So the, potentially, it's a massive game for Real Madrid. Yeah, they yeah. win this. They, you know, they could get a bit of momentum up before the Christmas period. But Valencia, if they win this, they'll go ahead of them on goal difference. That's ridiculous. Real Madrid's goal difference after 13 games is one. One. That's, one. I mean, United are the only team that are doing worse in terms of that. You're, you're yeah, negative right now. Negative one, yeah. But that's crazy. One. Absolutely in a league Real dominated Real. by yeah. Real Madrid and Barcelona, this, yeah. is, this is hilarious for anyone who doesn't like those two teams. 100%. No, it's absolutely mental La Liga season. And why don't we open up to the floor? Who do you think is going to win La Liga this year? Does anyone want to give it a go? Vote in the poll above. Mm. Why don't you use Sevilla, Barcelona, Deportivo Alaves, 
Let's put uh, Real Madrid in there as well. Girona. And Athletic. Just take Wild card. Yeah. Yeah. A big old um, cult. Make it big. big. Before, before we end the section, score prediction. Oh, score yeah, prediction for this, yeah. of course. Um, I think it's going to be... Um, I think yeah, I think Valencia are going to win this, actually. Yes. I think it's going to be 2-1 to Valencia. 2-1. I'm going to go with a very dull 1-1 one, one No, draw. I'm going to say 2-0 Valencia. Oh, come on, the, the bats. Shape. The bats? Is that? Yeah, the bats. It could be the yeah, bats. We'll yeah. go with that. Go on, the bats, the, go on the bats. Go on the bats. Second game we're previewing this weekend is Roma versus Inter Milan, which is taking mm. place on Sunday. And we're just going to rattle through this because we ended up talking about Real Madrid and Valencia for quite a while. And I'm going to kick off with Roma, who are having quite a strange season, actually. They've beaten Lazio and Sampdoria, but they've lost to Milan, Bologna, Spal and Udinese last weekend. Uh, they're currently seven, nine points behind Inter Milan already mm, going into this game. Good. So if they lose this game, there's potentially an unrecoverable gap. Uh, there's a serious battle to finish in the top four now. They finished in the last top four in the last, they finished third or above, sorry, in the last mm. five years. But they're coming under real, real pressure. Um, as we mentioned earlier, Edin Dzeko is injured, mm. um, although I'm not sure whether he's coming back for this game, and his replacements haven't been that great this year. El Sharari's, you know, been in fits and starts, Chengiz under with that awful miss in midweek, and Patrick Schick, I think he's played, this is actually in Europe, but he's played nine games without a goal in the Europa League and the Champions League, wow. which isn't great. Yeah, um, but it's mainly at the back, which is the, the weird thing for Roman, because last year they had the second best defence in the league. They They're only really conceded solid. 28 goals, incredibly solid, but they've already conceded 16 this year. And what are we, mm. uh, just over a third, third of the yeah. way through. And they've conceded, uh, you know, over half of what they conceded last year. Um, and there's a few different theories about what this might be. It might be the loss of Alisson, who obviously went to Rome, um, Liverpool, sorry, who was exceptional last yeah, year. And also, I think a slightly underrated loss, loss was Strootman, who's gone to Marseille. Mm. Uh, he brought in Mar uh, in Zonzi from Sevilla, and he hasn't really fired in quite the same way. He's only making 2.2 .2 tackles and interceptions per game. Uh, compared to Strootman, who was making 2.6 last year. And, bad. Which isn't a massive loss, yeah. but there's just been a lack of control, really, in midfield. I don't think they're winning Strootman's the midfield. Strootman's been there for so many years, hasn't he? Exactly. He's he exactly knew that. exactly what was going on. Yeah. His relationship with De Rossi uh, was almost perfect. But they've, you know, they've got some exciting long talent coming through, like Brian Cristante as well. Um, but their opponents this Quite weekend, well. Michael. Yeah. Inter Milan. Have you managed to catch a bit of Inter Milan this year? Um, not a huge amount, but, um, but I did... Kind of stupidly tip them to, to win Serie A. At the start of the <laughs> Regressing and, it now. Um, yeah, probably not going to happen. Although you never know. You know, stranger things, stranger have, things happened. have happened. Um, but uh, having said that, they are pretty safe in third place mm. now. I can't think of how they're quite a few points um, ahead of the next uh, the next club. Who I can't remember who it is. Who's in fourth? But um, is it Milan. I'm not sure. I don't know if it is Milan. Um, Milan might. Be it might be. La I think it might be Lazio. Lazio. Yeah, that's me. But. Um, but yeah, so they, they've kind of consolidated themselves in that area. Obviously, Juve have just been in ridiculous form, so pretty much uncatchable. Um, having said that, they've been quite inconsistent of late. They've won just two of their last five matches in all comps, um, although those wins were 3-0 against Frosinone and 5-0 against Genoa. Not the best teams by any stretch of the imagination, but um, still big wins. Um, but I feel like they're still reeling a little bit from that 4-1 loss to Atalanta, mm. um, which having a just before the international they break. So cool, um, they were really, really, really bad. They allowed Atlanta six clear cut opportunities, 18 shots and nine shots on target, and their it's only shots on target. Them. for Inter as well. Yeah, exactly. If you've got, when you've got uh, Scrini and Miranda at the back, mm. um, yeah, it's a little bit alarming to, to, to see those and kind of numbers. And as well. Yeah, they've, they've since kind of recovered, but, um, but yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's an odd one. Um, and their only shot on target that game came from a penalty. That was an Icardi penalty. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I mean, it's no secret that they are still over a line on that Ricardi, yes. yeah. um, which is an alarming thing. Um, and when you look at their actual XG, it would suggest that that's, that's, uh, that's the case as well. They've been overperforming significantly on XG, on XG against as well, and on expected points. Really? Um, so I think they should, despite being clear, quite clear in third, they should be fifth according to According to expected points. Well, it does help when you've got a sort of one shot, one goal. Kind well, that, of. Yeah, well, that, well yeah. that's the th that's the thing. Um, obviously, you know, the, a player like Cardi can can Skew. kind of distort distort that a bit and, and kind of bring brings a stat like that into disrepute a little bit. But um, having said that, like you know, he's got ten goals in all competitions. Um, the next most is Nyangalan on three. There's a few on two as well. So it's not like that. Um, it's not like they're not scoring enough goals, but. You know, if something happens to Icardi like it did last season when he was injured for a few spells, or if he just 
doesn't hit form, mm. suddenly we will we will almost definitely see Inter Milan go on like a five six game run where they don't win a game. Yeah. Um, like we did see this time last season. Um, but the one uh, guy who I think is um, the one the one guy who I think it has been a bit of a positive recently has been Kate Balde, who obviously they brought yes. in the summer. Um, well against Frozen, yeah. Very well against Frosinone. He's got got two got two goals and an assist. Um, only his fourth league start of the season as well. I think it's the only first time that he completed wow. ninety minutes. Um, and obviously, people kind of yeah he, he you know obviously went to Monaco last year. Didn't really get spoken about much. Now been at Inter and hasn't really had his chance yet. And it's, it's a difficult one because obviously Perisic has that left set side mm, kind of nailed, uh, down. nailed down. But Perisic hasn't been that productive this season. Yeah. Keita Balde has now actually got the same amount of goal contributions as Perisic has in about half the minutes. So that begs the question, should Keita Balde be starting in this place? Um, yeah, I don't know, I think, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure, because I do rate Perisic a lot. But I think, um, yeah, there's just something, I don't, I don't know what it is with Inter. Like, obviously, nyingland has been playing in a more advanced role. Maybe he should have actually been contributing to more goals than he has in, in that role. It's just... Yeah, I, I, I just feel like it's, yeah, yeah. With, 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 if Icardi's not on form, though. Uh, it it, it might time not be just well. purely Icardi, though. I do think the service to Icardi is, is more important than, I know it sounds mm. weird, but Icardi being on form because he is so good that yeah. he will finish his chances. Against Tottenham, they didn't, they, he didn't have a touch in the box. No. So, I mean, this poor form could be continuing into this game, mm. uh, which is worrying for them. Uh, you know, if you can't get the ball to Icardi, it seems anyway, that Inter won't do well. And that's yeah. purely yeah. the case. So, yeah, as long as they've, <laughs> I know it's obvious to say, as long as they can get the ball to Akali, they have enough right to win this game. But this could be Roma's opportunity, considering, especially at home as well. Yeah, it, I mean, they didn't look they didn't look too bad in midweek in Champions League. They they should have performed better. I mean, the miss, as you said, was oh. absolutely horrendous, and they they've been That's unlucky. Where, yeah, Inter weren't performing anywhere near where they should be or how they have been in the league in terms of. I mean the five nils, the three nils. Yeah. So for this, I think there needs to be like R Roman need to see this is right. This is where our season actually starts. This is where we actually go and kick on. Because if they don't, I mean you can see it slipping yeah. horrendously were, away. I was at I was at Wembley midweek with a mate who's a Spurs fan and. Um, Spurs, uh, sorry, Inter were just a bit toothless really. It, yeah. took, it took them until the 80th minute to really start threatening the um, the Spurs goal. And uh, yeah, they were very solid defensively. To be fair, they you know they really limited Kane to very few opportunities and the whole Spurs lineup. Um, but yeah, we're looking for more from you Inter and mm. Roma this yeah, weekend. Definitely. What are we thinking? Quick score pr prediction. Uh, I like Roma a lot, but I I I think it will continue being bad. From I'm going to say like a two one. Two one Inter. Inter. Cubs. Yeah, I'm going to go for an Inter win as well, actually. I think if Keita Balde starts, he's been on such hot form recently. I think, um, I'm going to say 3 0 Inter. Ooh! Yeah. Spicy. I am going to upset the apple cart. I'm going to go for a home win. Yeah. Adam the Blue, 2 1. Fair enough. Nice. Right, it's time for some quick fire questions. Here we go. First one from li at literally the guy. He says, <laughs> if you could own any football club, which would it be? Would you strive to play great football or win trophies? Jimbo. Um, mine is such a rogue shout, it's going to be really boring for the audience, but I'm actually going to go for my local club, Hampton and Richmond. Nick. Nice. Just because as a club owner, I would find it extremely stressful to do anything um, when it comes to being in a big team. So I like the small little kind of home mm. comfort. Oh, of it. yeah. And I, uh, in terms of kind of play great football, win trophies, Probably play good football, just keep everyone happy, make sure the club stays afloat. You'd be a very nice owner, actually. Yeah, I, I just want everyone to have a great time. You yeah. know, make sure the burgers are good. The Christmas party would be yeah. legendary. Yeah, ooh. it would be good. Yeah, probably spend most of the money on the Christmas party, to be fair. Baseline set. <laughs> Baseline set from yeah, me, Cubs, you can Mike be, on you the can mic. be brought in, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's the, but no, exactly, I, yeah. I, I, I would prefer to have a peaceful life. <laughs> yeah. So I would genuinely just pick up at, you know, my local club and just make sure they stay afloat and have fun with it. Nice. Cubs, yeah. are you helping out at Hampton or Richmond? Or are you taking on a different uh, club? I'll take on a different club, but I can't think of who it is right now. Do you? Yeah. You go. You go, you go. Uh, yeah, I'd, uh, I mean, it's every person's dream to manage the club they support. So, I'd, I, you know, I'd take some of them back up to the Premier yeah. League. Yeah. A rightful place. Imagine, challenge there as well. It's imagine a real being, challenge, how yeah. good would it be? You be the guy to take him back up to the Premier oh, League. Oh, it'd be awesome. You'd be good um, out in folklore. We had an awful owner uh, for quite a few years. Luckily, he's he's gone last summer. But uh, the new owner seems to be doing really well, actually. So I don't want to replace him right now. But, you know, give me a call in 30 years. <laughs> uh, and we would strive to... Actually, I don't really give a about good football when it comes to Sunderland. Let's just get in amongst it. Let's get yeah. in the top top 10. Scrap your back way to the Back to the Steve top. Bruce days. Yeah, yeah. love it. 
And uh, yeah, we, we you know pick up a EFL cup here or there. Nice. The Cubs. Um, I'd say maybe. You're a purist. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, when it says strive to play great football or win trophies, I think uh, you know you don't have to do both. You don't, sorry, you don't have to have one or the other. Do you? Yeah. You've got to do <laughs> play both. crap football. Don't win either. Yeah, yeah, yeah crap brilliant. Win nothing. That's what I'd want to do. Um, style. I think maybe I don't know. Maybe go to Ajax. Ooh, Ooh that's such a rogue shout. I love, I love that. that. I love that. And then Ajax, lovely. Uh, you know, just. You know, I mean, I, to be fair, I, I, actually, I actually still kind of do a fairly good job of kind of bringing through youth and kind of trying to stick to the kind of philosophies of Cruyff and stuff. But, mm, um, but I think obviously like such an amazing historic club, it'd be great to, great to be involved Cruyff in that. Yeah, that would, that yeah would exactly. Be great. And, yeah, and yeah, bring, bring that back Going abroad as to well. Ajax. I want to bring three consecutive European Cups mm. back to Amsterdam like they did. Uh, in the early 70s. You'd have that's, a lot of fun in Amsterdam as the owner as well. You oh, wish yeah, you were born in the 70s. <laughs> oh, yeah, sideburns oh, were well in then. Yeah, no, I would bring, yeah. back, bring back the sideburns. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that would be your first club policy. Every player has to have sideburns. Everyone has Definitely. to look like a 70s. Yeah. Everyone, has, everyone has to wear flares. <laughs> um, and yeah, but, you know, yeah, all sports science out the window, you know, smoke, <laughs> drink, yeah, it's, all of that. It's free love over at Exactly, McCubbins free Ajax. love, total football, you know, <laughs> bring back the glory days, that's what I say. Um, Excellent answer, that love yeah, that. Right, we've got stuff. Hampton, Ajax and Sunderland. Next up, we're going to John G. Howard's question. He said, who's a footballer who wasn't amazing, but really captivated you as a kid? His example is he used to love Benny McCarthy, but looking back now, he has no idea why. I didn't like Benny McCarthy. Um, yeah, Cubs, did you have a that. little idol when you were younger who's actually turned out to be quite uh, it, it was a weird. It was a weird one. I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't say sh it was. It was a weird one actually. Um, <laughs> when I was kind of when I started my Man United obsession, loved Van Nistelrooy for obvious reasons, but he was genuinely brilliant. But um, I think when I first started playing football, um, for some reason I kind of fancied myself as a goalkeeper. Oh, yeah. Not that I really played there that much, but I got myself a pair of goalkeeper gloves with. And you could get you could get goalkeeper gloves with with Fabian Barthez's name. Nice, on them. Um, really a good pair of Nike gloves. Um, I mean, flimsy compared to what you get these days. But um, yeah, for some reason, I had this a bit of an obsession with Fabian Barthez, despite him never really being that great for United and just being a bit. I mean, he was just a bit of a belligerent keeper, slaphead in, in his honour. Uh, no, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Not, not, not quite, not quite to that level. But yeah. I did, I did used to love the way that he just kind of. Um, he was, he was just a bit of a yeah. house, wasn't he? Yeah, as, 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 he was a bit of a calamity at times, Barca. He was a calamity, but like, I, I love the, the fact he used to take absolute pleasure in just kind of um, having the ball and like kind of guiding the striker in before picking up. All that kind of good stuff. Absolute tease. Good, good stuff that uh, and goalkeepers do, but yeah, for some reason I loved him. Fair. And Jimbo, you've got a bit of choice actually. I mean, City yeah, City, uh, when I was growing up, money. City were just, I mean, you could pick the whole squad really. <laughs> but there's a few that kind of really stood out to me when I was growing up, like Sean Mike Phillips, just. He was just such this little dynamo, mm. and I wasn't like that tall for a lot of my my kind of adult not adult my kid childhood. So, mm. um, and I kind of really looked up to him just for the fact that he was just tiny little guy, eighteen year old, broke onto the scene at City and absolutely smashed it. He was it. exceptional at City he was before so, he moved to Chelsea, was, wasn't he? It, it it broke my heart when he moved, and when he came back, it broke my heart again because he was just not the same player. Mm. And what, oh, it really hurts me even more the fact that he left the season before we won the league. But a lot, yeah, he, but yeah. but he was there on the day when we won it. Oh, so did he come back? no, no, he was he was playing for QPR. So of he course. was he was he was actually there on the day. Witness one of my one of my favourite moments actually is he actually uh, when the game had finished went into our dressing room first rather than uh, really going to QPRs. Despite despite them celebrating staying up on that same day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, 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 he's got no like, love. I, 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 I'm such a big Sean Mike Phillips fan. fan. Um, another player that was just Stephen Ireland as well. I, thought, I wasn't really a kid, but. It's a weird fascination. Stephen Ireland was a good, was a good player. Yeah, like he, he was, I don't know, we went through a weird patch, but he, he was uh, just a stand up for, I don't really know why, but I just really, really enjoyed him. Fair. Yeah, yeah I'd probably go Sebastian Larson, best looking man in the world. No, yeah. Um, yeah quality free kick. A quality yeah. free kick. And uh, who else was quite shit to pay for Sunderland? Craig Gardner, always quite liked him when he was at Sunderland. I had a friend, uh, I'd be very, very surprised if he's watching this, uh, we're not gonna name names, who pretended when we went to uni that he was his cousin. And Craig Gardner. Just, it, both the Gardner brothers. It was just like the really? weirdest lie ever. That what is, is it about so Southampton and attracting that kind of stuff? Yeah. It's obviously like the, the it, same city that Ali Deer, you know, got <laughs> yeah. on. He was, like, he was like, yeah, yeah, th these are my cousins. It's like, but why are you even lying? Like, that's not an impressive lie. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, one cares, no offense, no one cares about the Gardner. No one really yeah. cared about Craig Gardner who was even at something. Yeah, shout out to you. There you know who you are. Yeah. 
And let's roll straight into the end board, lads. Um, big weekend this weekend. There's another football social on Sunday mm. in the Cubs. Are you yeah. featuring on that? Well, I'm not featuring, no. No. Uh, Chris Hamill will be yeah. and... Five hour bonanza. Pete Dorman, maybe. Really? I can't five quite hour. remember. Yeah. But it's five hours. North London derby and the Merseyside mm. derby. Oh. Derby, so derby. If you think you can handle it, oh. go over there. <laughs> if you're hard <laughs> you enough. You can actually, I think it's actually already on YouTube. You can set a little reminder and it will it will remind you when it comes up because it's already it's already there the thumbnail's already there Love so, it. Yeah, so I've get, seen get that clicking actually. on that and then you tech don't wizard get Michael yeah, give you a little yeah. notification um, if you haven't already watch sevens on FDFC mm, yes. yeah. i think it's on FDFC it, it might it might it's on it's on FDFC. FDFC. uh we're actually playing football now so you've been wanting it for a while and it's now you have it every week go yeah around. we aren't playing though we're not good enough no. yeah. and why don't you go check out yesterday's content as well that was the league and hot takes Thanks very much for watching, guys. As ever, don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Oh, land on my lap. Perfect. That was class, actually. <laughs> <laughs>